Hi everybody, Mark Green here, the Diabetes Diet Guy, bringing you free information and advice about managing diabetes and getting on top of those tricky glucose levels. If you haven't done so already, head over to my blog, diabetesdietguy.com, where we've got a bunch of free information and courses to help you manage your diabetes. Now today's video is focusing on type 2 diabetes, but there has been huge changes in the guidance for both type 1 and type 2 diabetes from NICE in the last week. And this is to do with how we test your glucose levels. Historically, people with type 2 diabetes that might be on insulin or sulfonylureas will be prescribed glucose test strips, which requires a finger prick. Now this has changed. It has now been uh, recommended that people with type 2 diabetes who meet certain conditions can access flash glucose monitors like the Freestyle Libre 1 and 2, although most people are using the 2 version now. Previously, people with type 2 diabetes did not meet criteria for this, which means the best that they could hope for was finger prick testing. Now, of course, there are always some conditions for this, so it needs to become both cost effective and clinically effective for people to access this. So let's just look at some of those conditions. The first condition is that the person is taking multiple daily insulin injections. So you need to be on insulin to access this as there's little benefit if you're on oral medications or taking a GLP-1 agonist, once, one injection once a week, that's not insulin. And the reason is because for those individuals, they're not really at risk of hypoglycemia, low blood sugars. There are a couple of tablets that might increase the risk um, and do have hypo-related um, issues like sulfonylureas. But ultimately, for the vast majority of people, tablet controlled in terms of how effective that's being can be picked up with a HbA1c test and then treatment can be escalated or de-escalated appropriately. For sulfonylureas, again, there's not a great deal you can do about it in terms of looking at the glucose profile that these flash glucose monitors give you access to so actually, if you're having frequent hypos, it's still easier just to speak to the GP or the diabetes specialist nurse and de-escalate the therapy. But for those people that are taking insulin, the benefits start to increase. Now, just to make sure that we're familiar with the Freestyle Libra and the Freestyle Libra 2 devices, what do they actually give you? Well, first of all, you don't need to finger prick. You can scan it. This device sits in your arm. I don't know if you can see my arm where I'm sat and it measures the interstitial fluid between blood and um and you, your uh between your blood and your skin so it's not measuring blood glucose levels so the result will never quite marry up with what you're seeing on a finger prick test but it should be there or thereabouts and obviously finger pricking still doesn't mean that it's completely out the window because if in doubt finger pricking still probably always best but regardless it allows you to scan your glucose levels and then not only does it give you the reading at the time, it gives you the direction of travel that it's moving, which is why it's brilliant for preventing things like hypoglycemia. Now, an additional benefit is each time you scan these devices, they will then give you the previous eight hours worth of data um, and plot it on a graph. So you can see how your glucose levels have been moving and the effects of things like meals or your overnight, overnight profiles to see how your um, glucose levels have been responding to their insulin therapy. So it's so much more powerful than just a finger prick, which just gives you the here and now. This is why then that the first condition is that people need to be on multiple daily injections of insulin, starting from twice a day. So this is usually uh, twice daily intermediate acting insulin or mixed insulin. So you'll take one at breakfast and you'll take one with your evening meal. And then that is conditions enough to access this, assuming that you meet the next bunch of criteria that I'll outline shortly. The other type of insulin regimen that we'll see quite frequently with this is people that um, are taking a basal bolus regimen. This means you take a once a day or twice a day long acting insulin, and then you take additional rapid insulin on top of your meals. So this is basically how type one diabetes is treated. So it makes sense, right? That if we're treating type one diabetes like this, and they have access to this technology, then people with type two diabetes should also get access to the similar technology because ultimately they're at the same risks of hypos and highs and everything that comes with it. So it makes sense, right? Now, to drill down a little bit further into the criteria, the second part of this is that people need to meet 
any of the following criteria, but they don't need to meet all of them. So that's important. You just need to meet one of them. So the first one is a need to test eight or more times a day with a finger prick. So this is the point where it becomes cost effective to use the uh, scanning devices over finger prick testing. So actually, if you have that need, it might be that you're taking that basal bolus regimen where you're taking rapid insulin with meals. You can quite easily get up to eight finger pricks a day. Um, it's not that hard to do. And actually, there's some good data to show that the more regularly that you test, the better glucose control that you have. So cost effectively, it will be good for GPs then to switch from finger prick testing with the strips, which are quite costly, to the Freestyle Libra 2 device. So that's the first thing. The second one is to do with hypoglycemia, low blood sugars. If you're experiencing frequent hypoglycemia, particularly if you've lost awareness to your symptoms, then that is means to then be recommended the Freestyle Libra 2 device because it has alarms when your blood sugars are going low, so it lets you know. Now, some people still get their hypo symptoms, but they get them too late. So they'll, I hear this quite frequently to say, yeah, I get my hypo symptoms, kicks in around two, I'm fine until my blood sugars are around two, 2.5, then I get a bit wobbly. It's important to know that if you're having a low blood sugar below four, even if you don't feel it, it's still a hypo. Physiologically, that is still doing things to your body. So it's important to have early detection, which the Freestyle Libra 2 can give you with its alarms. Another criteria is if you have an occupational need. So think about this, right? If you're a chef or a builder and you can't test your finger, you can't test your glucose levels at work because you're wearing gloves or you're handling food, for example, then actually a glucose scanning device becomes very handy. So we're not um, we're not punishing people that have certain jobs come over others because they just physically can't test or their hands are dirty because they have um, physical jobs where they're using their hands. Uh, and you, you know from anyone that spoke to you about testing your glucose levels that you need a clean hands that need to be washed. But if you're out on a building site, it's probably not practical to be testing your glucose levels that frequently and cleaning your hands every time. So that's another reason for people or patients to go on to this device. One other reason for this to be started might be that the patient has some learning difficulties or they might need some third party assistance to manage their glucose levels. So again, makes sense, doesn't it? That if you're struggling to test with your glucose levels and you can't physically do it yourself, just making the process easier is a good idea. And last but certainly not least is if you have any comorbidities that by using a Freestyle Libra 2, it makes the management of that comorbidity much more easier. The classic one is hemodialysis for kidney disease, where the glucose is sip, um, strapped out your blood, it sucked out your blood because it's filtering your body, basically doing the job of your, your kidneys for you. And therefore people have days where they have buildup of glucose in their blood and then they have other days where the hemodialysis will remove that and then they will need less insulin on those days. So it becomes very tricky to manage to the point where you almost have hemodialysis days and non-hemodialysis days in terms of what dose we're giving you for your insulin and learning those patterns is very, very useful. Now, one thing is yet to be seen is as guidelines change, actually what is the uptake of that? Now, I know my, type, my diabetes colleagues that work in diabetes day in, day out, they'll have their finger on the pulse and they'll be looking at these guidelines and be very aware of the updates and therefore diabetes specialist teams, I'm sure, will be quite keen to roll this out as soon as possible because ultimately if we can help our patients and get better glucose control, then why wouldn't we? I guess where the problems might be seen, and this might not be a problem, it's just my opinion, is people that, or healthcare professionals that don't work in diabetes day in, day out, and they dabble in a bit of everything, namely GPs and diabetes specialist nurses in GP surgeries that also do a bunch of other stuff because they have to be aware of almost every update there is. So they might have received emails about it, but they might have also received emails about asthma, COPD, heart disease, kidney disease, um, and the list goes on and on and on for every single condition there is. So one, they might just need to check that the guidelines have indeed been updated, and two, that it is okay to actually prescribe these devices for people with type two diabetes, because historically that's not been the case. So like anything, it can take time for it to be integrated. But hopefully as time picks up, 
that will start to see this from GPs and diabetes specialist nurses in those surgeries. And of course, people with type 2 diabetes probably don't get as much access to the diabetes specialist teams as someone with type 1 diabetes, who tends to be under a specialist one way or another, not everyone, but they do tend to be on the radar to a certain extent, and therefore they get to see the people that deal with diabetes day in, day out, who, as I said, will have their finger on the pulse with this stuff, as opposed to people with type 2 diabetes, which is the vast majority of people. Some see the specialist teams, depending on their condition and how well it's being managed, but the vast majority will actually be under GP surgeries and therefore will be relying on their GPs and um, colleagues to be prescribing these should they meet the need. And that's it guys, so big updates. So I just wanted to fill you in on this and as you can tell, it's an exciting update for everyone in diabetes and we're finally glad that we can use these devices to help our patients because it's been a long time coming and it's gonna make things so much more easier um, in regards to getting on top of those glucose levels because if we can see the profiles um, when we see patients in clinic and see what's been happening uh, throughout the day from those glucose trends, it's just gonna make adjusting the insulin so much more easy and better to give you advice to um, get on top of things. Remember, if you haven't checked out the blog, head over to diabetesdietguide.com where we do written articles on all these videos um, and also in group embed the videos as well. And we also have courses and advice for patients like yourself to get on top of your diabetes. So head over there if you haven't done so already. And if you found this video useful, subscribe and like the video, share it if you can, because ultimately it gets us in front of more people, which helps more people and ultimately helps out our channel.